Off-season training is to get better with skills and pinpoint your weaknesses so you can work on them so you can get better. All right. So off season is the time to say, what are my weaknesses? I know I've had these weaknesses during the season. Let me spend some extra time on these weaknesses. It's the Speed to Dominate podcast, the podcast where coaches, parents and other high level industry professionals come to learn how to get their athletes faster so you can dominate your sport and do all things that you set your hands to do with all of your might because he has made you to have dominion over the works of your hands. And while you're here, like, comment, and rate this podcast. Welcome to the Speed to Dominate podcast. I'm your host, Coach Harper. As always, I'm here and I'm so glad and I'm so excited that we get a chance to talk today because today we're going to be talking about in-season versus out-of-season training, which is best for our kids, our, our young athletes, our older athletes, which is best and how do we do it and what are some tips to do it that way so um again i'm this is one of the questions that i get actually i don't get this question a lot but i do get the misconception from a lot of people that i talk to uh and they just think that you know my kids are in season so i'm gonna wait until they get to the off season to actually start training so we're gonna tackle that today we're gonna figure out is it better to actually train in the off season or is it better to train during the season and so like i said we're going to talk about that today and we're going to get it all put out there so you can get the answer to that question and then you'll know how to move forward with your young athlete or with your older athlete all right so before we get started guys though i just want to to just 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 give you a quick story um kind of about my son and as it relates to this topic here uh so i want to just tell you a little bit about him and how he how he came out and especially as we're going through the season um right now and i just want to show you exactly how he's doing so my son my oldest son tyler he's uh been he was doing his off-season training before the season, okay? And, of course, we did all of that. We got him better for the season. Uh, he, he got faster. He's more agile. Um, and uh, we, got him, we got him ready, right? So he goes into his season. He plays football. So he goes into his football season, and he starts really doing a very good job, okay? He's, he's, he's running faster. He's quick off his routes. Um, we got to work on his blocking, <laughs> but you know, he's a wide receiver, so he's quicker on his routes and he's, he, you know, he's getting open and, um, had a little bit of trouble catching. So we, you know, we're working on that, <laughs> but he's, he's he, all of the agility things and the speed things he's got. Um, the, one of the biggest things that I really enjoy about him and, uh, because I'm a guy about hustling, I love kids when they hustle, when they get out there and they run and they're, and they're out there and they're giving everything they got. He also plays kicker for the team, so he's the kickoff specialist. <laughs> and so when he kicks the ball off, he's always, always, always the first person down, and he's always, nine times out of ten, he's the person making the tackle, <laughs> right? So he kicks the ball off, goes down, and he makes the tackle. Like, that's his thing. Like, I'm pretty sure coaches, you know, they try to plan for that. Like, make sure you block ten, <laughs> right? Because he kicks the ball off, goes right down there, and makes the tackle. And – that's one of the that's one of the better things that, that that he does, and because of that, we we want we always are trying to nurture his speed. It's like, hey man, get down there, get out of get out of field quicker. Because if you get there quick, and you know those kids are fumbling around with the ball, you might be able to make a tackle and come up with a turnover. And you know you guys get the ball back in really good field position, and then you you can go. Um, but he was able to get faster. Uh, like I said, his agile, he's got a lot more ag- agility uh, and what he's doing. Um, but we started to see that he gets kind of flat during the season. And, you know, coaches weren't really going to him as far as being a playmaker or offense, even though he can run past kids and runs pretty good, could get routes. And a lot of that has to do with, the, you know, offensive line and things like that. But we we decided that, hey, look, Let's go ahead and start putting some 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 work in as it pertains to, you know, your speed and your agility and then some of the skills too. 
<clears throat> so that we can become even more dominant during the season. Because I thought about it, you know, I thought about it to myself, and I was like, when I coach track, of course track, we're always training because that's what we do, <laughs> right? You gotta train to run track. You don't just you don't just go out and practice track and then go out there and just run. Like, no, you have to train. Like you're you're literally training. So we have to we have to figure out our training to do it a different way. So I thought to myself, I said, hey, what if we did training for him like we do our track and field training. Let's just change it around. Let's do let's do some sprint work. We we'll also do some <clears throat> some some other things, but that we will work on to kind of strengthen or kind of get him better or kind of get him used to doing the things that he's already doing in in football. And so 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 on Sundays we started doing some some different type of training. All right. So we worked on speed and we worked on um, skill and agility and stuff too. Um, <clears throat> Laid more off of the agility, but did more of skill, more skill things like ball skills, uh, jumping up, catching balls, and things like that, and also sprinting, all right, and sprinting in and out of breaks and things like that. So so we started implementing that, and I said, what if I just kind of broke it down, kind of like how I do my track and field stuff, and break it down and really get him this 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 off this in season type of training and I'll make it kind of look like that because in track and field we we work from from a base and what I like to do and I always recommend to do it this way and I don't and most people a lot of people say well speed 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 it's track you gotta go speed okay that's cool I don't do it that way I don't believe that way because that burns your kids out so what we do is we start with a base and we work our base up and we gradually add speed over time until we get to the end of the season or close to the end of the season and then we just pour it on then we start peaking at the right time so that's what i figured i was like let me take that philosophy into his football training over the next couple of weeks and as we started doing that we we saw him start getting more dominant on the field. He also started scoring more touchdowns. He gained more confidence. That was the biggest thing. He he gained more confidence in his ability to go out there and and, and dominate. So even to the point like where he's out there and he's literally at receiver like tapping his helmet like, "Hey, <laughs> you know, you know, I got a mismatch over here. I'm going to beat this guy." You know, that confidence that's the confidence that we want them to have. Like, you know, hey, I know I'm going to I'm going to demolish you. <laughs> you know, the guy that's lined up in front of me like, yo, I'm going to beat you up and down this field. And it's nothing you can do about it because I'm so I'm too much. I'm so much better than you. Right. <clears throat> not not arrogance, but not borderline arrogance. That, that may have been a little bit arrogant, <laughs> but but more confident in my ability like coach throw me the ball i know i'm gonna go, i know i'm gonna beat this guy i know i'm gonna jump over his head and i'm gonna catch the ball i know i'm faster than him give me the ball right <laughs> and so he gained more confidence and because he was able to do that and because he has that that what we call swag <laughs> he has that swag he's like coach give me the ball i'm going i'm going to beat this guy throw me the ball watch you know um, he gained that confidence. His coaches started gaining more confidence in him, and they literally started throwing the ball up to him even more. At first, we were watching him throw the ball to him, like because he's he's a little he's a taller kid. He's about five foot six, five foot seven, and uh, most of the other kids are around five foot, five foot two, you know. And so he's a little bit taller than the rest of the kids. So they like to go to him, you know, red zone shots, right? Throw the ball up in the air, let him go up there and catch it, and. Uh, they they hadn't really been confident in him and his ability to actually go down the field and then go up and get it. But they actually started throwing him passes outside of the red zone where he's able to go down the field and go up and grab and go up and grab. And he's making some beautiful catches and, and it's all a result of us working during the end season. Right. And now the coaches are going to him in high pressure situations like, hey, we don't have anything else to do. Like they're stopping everything. All right. Let's go to 10. Right. Let's go to him. Just let him go. jump. Let him go get a jump ball. Like that's that's what they envisioned for him. They were scared to kind of do it because he was kind of lacking in that area. But then we started working on speed and we started working on his skill. And then they end up getting the more they get more confidence in him, and so they start going to him more. So as a result, he's scoring more touchdowns, he's getting longer passes, and he's getting more targets. So, so that's just a testament to the in-season training. And so here's the question: here's the answer to the question: 
is it better to do in season training or out of season training or what is the deal here all right so in my expert opinion in my expert opinion and because and not just the opinion through my case study <laughs> and my research i realized that it's even more important to do in season training than it is to do out of season training or just as important okay now don't get me wrong doing out doing training out of season is very very important trust me it's very, very important you don't want to sit around for three four five months do absolutely nothing and then try to come back right so what you do need to do in the off season is to do something <laughs> right to do something and i'm going to go over the things that you that you uh guys kind of want to do in your off season training and then i'll also tell you some things that you need to do in your in season training which can give you a competitive advantage in your sport, whatever sport it is, track, football, soccer, lacrosse, softball, any one of those, any one of those or any other one, tennis, uh, that lacrosse, like I said, I think I said lacrosse already, but <laughs> that that is going to give you a competitive advantage and that's going to help you. So I'm going to, there's, there's a couple of things. So off-season training and in-season training are both important for two different reasons two very different reasons and off-season training so let's start with off-season training off-season training is to get better with skills and pinpoint your weaknesses so you can work on them so you can get better all right so off-season is the time to say what are my weaknesses i know i've had these weaknesses during the season let me spend some extra time on these weaknesses for most youth athletes all right our young athletes or even some of the older athletes that weakness is going to be the way that they run okay a lot of youth athletes a lot of older athletes do not run properly so if you're going to be in the off season you want to focus a lot on how the youth athlete is going to be running or how do they run let's fix their form so that they can run faster they can gain more confidence and go out and dominate right so the off season is for that pick figure out the weaknesses pinpoint them and work on them so they can get better all right, so that's off season. In season training is for improving performance and peaking at the perfect time to get the best results during the season. So what does that mean? So I can relate it to track and field. So when you're running in track and field, we add speed work to the end of the season because that's when we really go on into championship season and that's when we need our kids to start peaking. And once you start working on the speed work, the kids will start to get faster, right? They will literally get faster once you start working on the speed work. And we don't want to hit that speed work too early because guess what? What happens is youth athletes, they go up. Once you start working on speed work, then they plateau and then they start to regress, right? If you continue to do that, and that's called, that's called burnout. So what we want to do is at that moment where they're, they're going up and right at the moment where they're going to, where they get to that peak moment and they start to, to, uh, to, to flatten out, we want that peak moment right at that peak moment to be our championship season and so that is the exact same thing that you want to do with your youth athletes when it comes to your seasons right at the end of the season or right into your championship season that's when you want them to, to peak and it's okay at the plateau at the peak during your offseason during your your postseason and then your end of the season because that's when it's really starting to count the most especially if you're playing football it's starting to count most in the latter part of the season, you got to win a string of games possibly to get into the playoffs. Or if you do have enough games won, you know, you need that. You need everybody at peak performance ready to go for the postseason. Track and field is the same way. You want everybody peak performance ready to go during the championship season, during these championship meets, right? Same thing with tennis and softball and all of those things. You want your athletes at peak performance. They won't get to peak performance if you're not working on getting to peak performance. If you're just going through the motions, you're every day, you know, come out, learn the learn the stuff, you know, practice what you're gonna do that week or that, you know, for the next game, and then you go out and do it, right? You get better when you train during the season. Okay. So here's another question that comes up. Should I be training my youth athlete how to run correctly during the season if it's if during the season we're supposed to be improving? The answer is absolutely. Absolutely, you should be working on how they run. Why? Because if they're running incorrectly, they can get injured. 
and we don't want them to get injured. So we also teach them how to run properly in during the season. All right. When we have training sessions. Now, your training sessions are outside of your normal practice times. OK, it is not that it is not the time for you to. To 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 stop to stop that stuff and and, and just do your regular practices like no you have to have training sessions all right that's why a lot of football players a lot of football teams you'll see these guys lifting weights during the off season all right you'll see them lifting weights uh during the in season i should say i'm sorry during lifting weights during the in season you see them lifting weights the day before the game <laughs> right and that was the craziest thing i i thought that i've seen on a friday when we have guys actually in the weight room lifting on a, I'm sorry, on a Thursday, because I coach high school football, on a Thursday, lifting on a Thursday when they play on Friday night. And I'm like, this is very weird. And when the coach explained it to me, he was like, you know, we got to continue to get stronger so we can build up resistance to injury and things like that. So we don't want our kids to get injured, so we still work on the way that they run. It's a shorter session. Okay, it's not as long as they they would be in in the off season, but there's a shorter session to main, make sure that we maintain what they have, and then also get them acclimated to running properly so that they won't injure themselves. Okay, or they have they can build up some injury resistance, I should say. So you do that during the end season. So as you can see, there is there are two specific different reasons why you would do in season training versus out of season training okay and you understand now you should understand the the importance of doing both okay so off season and in season training are both important for two different reasons off season training is to get better with skills and pinpoint weaknesses and work on them out to get better in season training is to improve performance and peaking at the perfect time to get the best results during the season all right so here's a couple of points that i want you to right now uh, for training. So training during the season is critical to peak during the games or meets. Training during the off season is critical because you want to enhance their skills, train speed in the season and out of season, and then train skills and form in the off season. Okay? Now, we want to train skills and form in the off season and not so much speed because, again, you can burn kids out before they get to the season. So as it is a chance for them to get faster and to do those things, I really recommend that you take it slower with that. And let's work more heavy speed right at the beginning of the season, get them into there, and then we slow it back down and then bring them back up. Okay. All right. So there are four points that I want you to take with you today that's going to help some strategies for training in season till you get to your off season. So strategies for training in season. There's four strategies. Here they are. Number one, train strength and speed conditioning in the early part of the season. So what do I mean by street speed conditioning? Like I was saying earlier, we're going to start with a base, slower time, slower times when we're doing this. And yes, you need to time them. And we want to get faster gradually as we go along until we get to the very end of the season or get to the couple of weeks two or three weeks out then we start turning it on all right so that brings me to point two gradually add in more intense speed training as the weeks go by remember we start with a base and we gradually increase as the weeks go by all right number three Get to 90% speed in training sessions when you're about two to three weeks away from postseason or in the end of the season, okay? So what does that mean? That means as we start, we should be around 50 to 60%. By the time we get two to three weeks out, we should have them running at 90%, okay? So when I say slow them down, that's what I mean. Work the speed drills and work the things at 50 to 60%, and we gradually get faster until we get to two to three weeks out. Then we start hitting them with 90 to 95 percent. And uh, then we add in all the other things like resistance and pulling and all that good stuff. All right. Uh, So that's that. So number four is rest two weeks after the season before starting your off season training. All right. Rest two weeks 
after the season before starting off-season training. Now, this gives them ample time for their muscles to relax, recuperate, regenerate, whatever they need to do before they start going into the off-season uh, training regimen that you have for them. All right? Um, so some people warn against being too specific, and I'm, I'm with them on that. I don't want you to get too specific with your with your children as far as like, oh, we're baseball kids and we only do baseball. And so in the season, we're doing baseball. Out of season, we're gonna we're gonna work baseball. Like, yes, that's good, but give them a chance to do another sport so that that it take their bodies and their muscles are doing something different, strengthening up different areas, and then come back to it. Now I know it's, I know that's a little tough for baseball because then because you, you got uh, kids playing fall ball and then they go to spring ball and then they go travel ball and then by the time that's over, it's back to spring, it's back to fall ball, right? So. Find some time in there to take a season off if you can. If you if you if you if you if you're not scared, <laughs> take a season off. Let them go play ba- basketball. Let them play football. Something like that. Come back to it. Uh, come back to your off season training and then bring them back into the season. Uh, things like that. I know that's it's, I know that's tough to do for for soft for softball for baseball for basketball because those those pretty much got three four different seasons <laughs> uh, that kids play in or that they compete in. But if you keep those four strategies for training in season very close to you, you can always rewind this and go back and all that stuff. Then I promise you guys, you'll ha- you'll see a lot better results and you'll start seeing your kid go up and peak at the right times <clears throat> and they will start dominate. They'll dominate in the beginning, but they'll they'll get even better and dominate even more as the season goes along. All right? As always, if you need more help with this, man, you can hop, you can literally hop on a phone call with me, like literally with me. Like I don't have people answering or making calls for me. I make all the calls. So you can literally call me and we can talk about a three-step plan to get your in-season or your auto-season training going for your youth athletes. I'm going to give you that three-step strategy absolutely for free. The call is free. It's a call is a free breakthrough strategy call. You, you can just click the link in the description and set up a call with me, uh, and we will talk. I'll talk you through that that strategy. I'll give you the strategy, and I'll also give you a chance to work with me if I feel like your kid uh, is a good fit for the program, and I feel like I can hundred percent help them. Then I'll invite them to have a chance to work with me, and once we do that. You can work. You can take the strategy that I gave you, and you can go implement it on your own, or find somebody else to help you to do it. Or you can let me uh, do it with you, or you can just do it by yourself. Either way is fine. I want to give you the information that you need so that you guys can take that and become more dominant, gain confidence, get faster, so you can start dominating your sport. All right. Remember that everything that you do today affects your future. So remember, tomorrow I'm Coach Harper, and I'll talk to you soon.